Okay, so this is the marking out of part two. This is the top wing of the biplane. Um, it's very similar to part three, which I've already have a video, maybe you've watched that first, maybe you haven't. So I'm going to go through it as per normal, like I did in the last one. Um, the first thing, um, this centre line here is very handy to mark off from, so I'm going to measure the length of the piece and find the halfway line. So the piece is 240, so I'm going to mark 120 and T square line up there. So now we can start using, this is our front edge here on the piece and we can start marking left and right. Um, the first curve here, we're going to draw the, do the curves first, all four of them, and the first curve here is up 100 and then it's in 20. The back curve is up 104 and in 20 plus 17, 37. So I'm going to do both sides at the same time. I'm going to measure up 100 from the centre line. And I'm also going to, because I have my 100 on the centre line, I know 100 up that end, 200 is 100 the opposite direction. I'm also going to mark 104 from the centre line. So if I mark 204 on this side, and then I have to move my ruler on this part, and I have 104 here. Now, the 100 mark I'm going to T square halfway across, and the 104 mark I'm going to T square the whole way across. That way it makes it easier to differentiate between the lines. Same down at the other end. Halfway on the 100, all the way on the 104. Okay, now we know from the drawing that the first centre is in 20, and the second centre on the 104 line is in 20 plus 17. So I'm going to mark 20 on the 100 line, and I'm going to mark 37, 20 plus 17, on the 104 line. I'm lining my ruler up against the edge. I'm mark, marking 20. And then on the 104 line, I'm going to mark 37. And I'm doing the same then down at the other end. Twenty on the hundred line, and then moving to the hundred and four line, I'm going to mark thirty-seven. Now, as those, as we're going to use the dividers to draw circles here, I'm going to punch both of all four of those points. Again, punch aluminium gently. It is thin and it will work. Now I'm going to set my dividers to the same radius as the circles here, R12, which all four are, and that will allow me to draw the circle. So if I start at 10 on my ruler, I must go to 22 on the ruler to have 12 between the divider points. So now I can draw, and remember these are all partial circles, so I'm going to look at the drawing and draw pretty much oversize on all cases. Just to be sure that I have enough of the circle done. The circles on one side. Now when I was actually marking out part 3, I forgot to put the tangents straight line between the two circles. So I'm actually going to do it now before I forget again. So a tangent just touches a line. So I'm going to line up my ruler very carefully with both circles and draw the line that would just touch both edges of the circle. So we have one there. And to do the other one now. Okay. 
Now if you do accidentally forget which is the front of your plane, which can happen, the two circles lean in towards the front here. So this is still our front. And from here we do a tangent to the nearest circle. So we might as well do that now. Again, to line things up as carefully as possible, take your time to get this right. Hold your ruler down firmly and draw a line. That's one side done. And now do the other. I find it's easier to have the ruler on as much of the metal as possible. If it's sitting out here, the ruler will be wobbling around. And because I'm left handed, I kind of have to do it this way. And if that disimproves visibility, I do apologise. So our piece now, we have most of it done. We still have to mark out for these two holes and this semicircle here in the middle. So first of all, I want to get this point. This point is where these tangents join up to. And it's also the center for this semicircle. Now, here we have, it's 40 from here back to the circle. So I literally just have to measure back 40 and punch it. Forty. Punch again, and I want to draw a circle. And again, it's radius twelve. So so long as I haven't adjusted my dividers, I can just go and call here. Draw a circle. If you have adjusted your dividers, or you may have, or someone else has used it, you need to check them first. Now, finally, here on this section, I'm going to draw a tangent from there to the back of this circle. This is being a little bit awkward as a left-hander. And now finally, we just have the two holes that are 3.5 to mark. Now this takes a little bit of maths. We're told here that the distance from the centre line out to the holes is 56 millimetres. And we're told here that it's 15 millimetres from that centre back. That Once we measure up, we can measure up the 56 in T-square lines and that's handy. But it's awkward to know where this point is. It's easier to measure from the front of the piece back. So 40 minus 15 is 25. So if we measure 25 from here, we get our point handle enough. So I'm going to measure 56 from the centre line, up and down, and T-square two lines. So I have 56 on my ruler on the centre line. I'm going to mark the edge of the ruler. And 56 plus 56 is 112, so I can mark that up this end. So both of those marks now are 56 from the centre end. I'm just going to T-square those lines across. And now, as we've calculated, 40 minus 15 leaves 25 distance here. So I'm going to measure 25. Mark it. And I'm going to measure 25 on this line and mark it. Finally, I have to punch the piece and we are done and ready to go drilling. There's the piece done. Drilling time. Okay, so we're going to drill part uh, two, I think it is, yes. Uh, two holes to drill in this, so it's only going to take a second to drill them. And 
again, get a big drill bit and just clean up the backs of the holes where the bar may have formed. Okay, so at this stage now, I'm going to go over to the shears and cut off as much as possible. I can do the sides here, but I can't do the back again. Okay, you're going to have to use a hacksaw or some other tool to cut this out. Because I'm the teacher, I get to use the bandsaw and it saves me time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a straight line up here and here to that point. That will remove this section. And then this curvy bit that has to be removed here, I'm going to cut a V in. That's what you're going to do with a hacksaw as well, and then use a round file to curve this. Um, so I'm about to do that, the noise will be quieting down. Okay, as you can see here, I cut a V out like that. That's what you want to do with your hacksaw as well, and then file these bits down. Okay, going to file this piece now, part two. Um, no problems around this sec these sections here. This is the only place that's a bit different. For that, I have a rough 150mm and a rough 150mm. Sorry, I have two files. One of them is a rough 150mm, the other is a smooth 150mm half round files. And then for the straight parts, I have a 250mm rough and smooth file as well. Um, this will be speeded up, obviously, so just to get started, um, I'm going to do what first? I'm going to do this curve in the middle first.
Right, yeah, that's the part all filed, um, right down to the line. As I said, I'm not, I've said this before on these, I'm not too concerned about, I mean, they're all good quality, but I'm not, I haven't gone for perfect smoothness now at this stage. I'll do that before I start assembling and checking assembling it. Um, that's the two wings done now, so there's only one other sheet metal part to do, which is part one. Um, but today I've been doing this long enough, so I'm going to be tidying up, unfortunately. It has to be done. Plenty of aluminium filings here. Alright, so see you on part one.